Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming today. Um, our capstone project is called Ditsy Magazine. I'm Georgia. I'm Ollie. And we can jump into the overview. Oh. <laughs> oh, um, so just to give an overview of our project, we made an online and print art zine and the final form was kind of a collage book accompanied by short written pieces. And our goal was to create something that satisfied our taste and what we were looking for in a zine, but could also be enjoyed by everyone without any context. And it went through many different ideas and concept changes that we'll walk you through. Um, so for this project, we sort of worked with two mentors. Our first is Daisy on Firth, and she's had a really extensive experience in the magazine world. Um, and she's worked a lot with design and fashion. She's the co-founder of the streetwear brand X Girl. And up on this slide, you can see some of the magazines she worked for. Um, and she was a really invaluable guide throughout this process, um, just because of all her experience. And she has a really good eye with this sort of stuff. And then towards the second half of our project, um, my mom gave us a lot of help and guidance. Um, she is a musician and was in bands. And so she kind of introduced us to the world of fanzines, um, like the ones on the screen, which she made. And um, this kind of became the base and template for what became Dixie Mag. So this project was originally conceptualized in 2019. It's always been called Ditsy. That has been like the one thing that has not changed. And it was originally a collaboration between us and three other friends. And we held meetings at the Smith College Campus Center, but it never came to fruition just because um, it wasn't really, it was very scattered and um, we didn't have a unified vision. So it sort of fizzled out, but we were really excited to pick it back up in a, a more structured format and um, present it as our capstone project. So then at the beginning of the semester, we um, brought it back and our original concept was something a lot more journalistic and a lot more similar to a real magazine. We wanted to interview artists and musicians and um, you know write uh, articles and stuff on things we were interested in like music and culture. And we were trying to have like a global approach and make it more, um, legitimate in the sense that we were going to utilize social media and kind of spread the word and try to get a big um, readership. So on the right, you can see our original notes from one of our earlier meetings. And then um, there's a picture of the band Sorry, which we did reach out to to interview. And we did not get a response. <laughs> <laughs> um. And so our original concept, we were kind of inspired by um, these two. Oh, sorry, I didn't switch it. Um, these two up and coming um, magazines and newspapers. So on the right, um, that is called Rubbish um, Famzine. And it's based out of Hong Kong. And it's a family who assembles this um, magazine every few months. And it's kind of a menagerie of different things that they put together. And they try to follow a central theme, but they include a lot of different um, experiences and interactions for the reader. And then on the left um, is the Drunken Canal, which is a newspaper in New York currently that's run by two young women. And they kind of just write about anything they like and anything they're interested in. And then they just put it out um, into the world. And so that was definitely a concept that we enjoyed. Um, and so then our sort of the next direction we went in after meeting with our mentor Daisy and with Steve was to sort of, we realized we needed to narrow in our focus a bit. And so we had this idea of um, compiling student art and writing and specifically um, about what it's like growing up here. Daisy is from New York and she sort of has this like romantic view of New England. So she thought it would be interesting for us to collect student work based on that. And then we also were interested in working with 
um, like a visual theme. So it was sort of cohesive in that way. And we were thinking the color blue would be nice. And here's some um, of our original material related to that. Um, and then one point we were meeting with Julie and we realized we weren't really enjoying the process. Um, it was sort of becoming a drag to work on. We were just stressed out about it. And she helped us realize that we didn't need to outsource for this project, that we could really like embrace our um, love of art and creating original material and have the zine be a work of art itself. Um, and she really emphasized that this should be a fun and joyful process and that will uh, that would come through to the reader that like we put a lot of care and effort into this and we had a fun time making it. And also around this point, originally we were more interested in um, doing an online digital version and we sort of realized how important the tactile experience is. Um, and especially now it's such a, it's a more rare thing. So um, we at least wanted to provide a few limited uh, print versions. Um, so the new direction that we ended up having be our final outcome was definitely more of a zine. Um, it doesn't include a lot of writing or a big overarching um, theme or anything really to focus on in that sense. Um, it's definitely much more inspired by the 90s fanzines and fan culture that um, my mom introduced us to and we ended up researching. And um, at the core of those is kind of this punk approach where you don't really care about um, the necessarily, you don't really care about the end product or at least you don't think about it ahead of time. You just kind of have fun with the process and then what comes out is more of a product of you and it ends up being cool and interesting anyways. Um, so um, gathering inspiration this time, we did research on these 90s fanzines and here are some examples. Um, so you can see that there's a lot more collage. It's kind of messy and black and white because um, at the time you could only Xerox in black and white. And so um, this is definitely a lot more closely to what our current um, magazine looks like. And on the left is a Japanese fanzine. Oh yeah, on the left is a Japanese fanzine. Oh, it's not switching. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, yeah. On the left is a Japanese fanzine that's really cool because it kind of combines um, our two ideas. It has a lot of different components and a lot of things that are interesting to look at and kind of shocking and thought provoking, but don't really mean a lot. Um, and in terms of sourcing our materials, we sort of uh, rummaged through used bookshops in the area. Um, and uh, we found a lot of cool old materials. We were interested in like um, these anatomy books. We found quite a few of them. And so that's sort of a visual tie throughout the zine. Um, and here you can see. Mm. No, it does. it's oh. delayed on here. Um, here you can see a bit of our collage process. This was like the most fun and exciting part, I think, um, and you know, it was at the heart of what this was. Um, so in terms of binding, uh, we have experience with Japanese book binding, which you can see in the top image here. Um, and I think it's really beautiful. And we tried this with a couple of copies, but the paper was too weak. So um, that ended up not working. And we instead used a sewing machine and thinner thread to stitch it. Um, we have some copies here. You can kind of see the stitching on and then there's um, a nicer picture up here. Um, mm -hmm. And we printed at Paradise Copies, but um, we faced a lot of difficulties when printing. I guess it's just, this was like the part of our project that we 
um, didn't have within our control and it didn't like necessarily come out the way we wanted um, because you know they had trouble cutting it and they also messed up the order of our pages which isn't that big a deal but I guess it was just kind of um, a setback to have like the one thing that we relinquished from our control go wrong um, but we ended up printing 20 copies and we are selling them for ten dollars a copy because just all things considered it kind of had to be that price we wanted we originally were going to price it much lower but um it just ended with up all being the expenses much more expensive yeah than we anticipated mm -hmm. and so then we focused oh yeah next we focus on logo design um we wanted something bold and eye-catching from the beginning and we also had to have it be in black and white um, so we were definitely inspired by things like Paper Magazine and Days Magazine because they just use a really simple, bold font. Um, and Dazed Korea, especially the way they have text embedded into the um, title is something that is reflected in our logo. Um, and yeah. Um, so the big takeaways from this project um, I mean, the first would be finding joy in the creative process. At first, um, as I mentioned earlier, it really felt like a task we had to complete and we were stressed out about it. Um, and luckily our mentor sort of like pointed this out to us and was like, this should be a fun process. Um, a more technical skill we learned was how to use a sewing machine for the binding. Um, and we had to, you know, really work on our communication skills, especially uh, because most of this was made remote um, until the end when we came together, we really had to be on top of, um, yeah, communicating efficiently. And um, I think collaborating, especially with art, can be a real challenge. Um, but I think we worked, we didn't have any major issues with this. And um, we, we learned to, to really sharpen our communication skills. Um, so then now we'll show you some sample pages. This is the magazine in its print form, um, but we'll just show you sample pages on the slideshow so everyone can see it. So this is the cover. And here are just some example pages. In total, it's around 40 pages. Um, these are just some of the ones that we thought were really successful. So yeah, that's the end. Um, we have a link to the online version just in case you want to look at it because we're not sure if we should pass these around. And yeah, you could just scan for that. Oh, you, you could uh, click on that link now, right? We could, yeah. There's also a QR code you can well, scan. Actually, what, what am I saying? Actually, I'm maybe on click with it now. Oh, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Um, we don't need to go through the whole thing, but <laughs> need to leave something for people to buy. <laughs> yeah, we really had to also consider um, because we were printing it in black and white, like what reads visually when you take away the color, because the collages were um, mostly created from color images, so we really had to pay attention to the values we were using and right and black and white composition for, oh so we are now in the question and answer segment of this presentation so please feel free audience you can ask questions if there's people remote and put things in the chat i will read the uh, questions for them but yeah who has questions for ali and georgia pearl Yes, we do. Um, we're not quite done binding them, and on Monday we we will have them. Um, you can reach out to us, um, I guess, through email or in the halls or Instagram. We could sell them too. Yeah. Yeah, just anywhere you can reach out to us, you'll be able to buy one. Yeah. Yeah. Follow up question from me. So, if it turns out that this is a big hit right and people really want to buy it would it be possible for a second run of a 
version? Yeah, certainly. And we also, like, we'd like to make another coffee, I think. Like another edition. Yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we had a lot of fun, and I think we have a lot more ideas. Um, so it's definitely something we look forward to continuing. Oh, so it would be important in your audience that if they thought this was a good thing, they would want to encourage you, probably by buying out this edition, <laughs> right? By responding and letting you know they'd like to see a second edition. So it, would it be helpful for your audience to respond well? Uh, yes, it would. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Other questions from the audience? Yeah. Yeah, Dipsy Mag. Um, we. Uh, <laughs> it just like came to us. Yeah, we we're really just interested in like the sounds of words, um, and we had like a long list, and Ditsy was just the most fun word to say, and we thought it had a nice ring to it. Um, I feel like it's an intriguing word and it kind of it sort of encapsulates our ditzy approach. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's not so serious and it kind of just piques your interest in a way that would at least make me want to read it. So that's why we've stuck with it for so long since the beginning. Other other questions? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Sequencing was a big part of it. Um, and um, yeah, a lot of it, because it's so visual, um, it was a lot of like laying out and reworking the order. Um, and then there are a couple pages that go together. Um, so that was sort of something we had to work around. And yeah, it was sort of frustrating when we realized the order got messed up when we printed it and we had to like redo uh, a bunch of the copies um, and fix it so that was also a bit of a setback but we worked through it so my follow-up question to that is you you mentioned you had a list of things you learned it was a fairly short list um the, it seems to me that i saw a lot of things learned uh, like just what you went through trying to figure out the best way to do your logo right did you say there was a learning process in that? Um, I feel like I did learn more about what I, my tastes were in terms of a logo, because it didn't take that long to design. And I like we've already done um, different like things with text in the past. So mm -hmm. I feel like we were building on previous experience, but it was just interesting to do more research into it and like refine it over time because we had different iterations so that that brings up a good question about in the entire process with your mentors uh as you said you've been working on this idea for years um if you had to kind of summarize what this iteration of the idea what, what were some of the big learning points for you that that might be more personal less formal but for example figuring out what you like that's actually the life's work of an artist Mm -hmm. um, so I'm curious, any other comments about in this process, the things, the challenges in overcoming these challenges, what were, what were other things that you think you personally picked up? Um, I think personally, and this was something we really did emphasize in the presentation, was making art for the sake of joy and like um, loving the process because otherwise I feel like what's the point personally? I mean, there are always um, obstacles in the artistic process and you know points that aren't so fun and it's not all a breeze, but I think like re when we redirected our project from having this more journalistic um, approach and in the format of a traditional magazine, which ultimately didn't really interest us, we learned. And um, I don't know, personally, I feel like I learned to enjoy the process and to make something that I love. And yeah. hopefully other people do too. Right, it, it gets harder and harder in art if that's not happening. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and yeah. and people can tell. It's it usually reads if, yeah. if yeah, that's cool. not there. Last chance. Any other questions from the audience? Wonderful. Ollie and Georgia, thank you so much. A fine presentation. <laughs>